All right, topic 4.4 is introduction to trigonometric equations. That's on pages 206 to 214 in your text. We're with our normal curriculum outcome where we're extending our understanding of angles and standard position expressed in degrees and radians. Our lesson objectives, to be able to solve trigonometric equations with the help of the coordinates we found on the unit circle. Two, to be able to make a connection between solving trigonometric equations and the skills we have built in solving other types of equations. And number three, to be able to determine both the specific and general solution to a trigonometric equation based on restrictions of, on the equation. So, recall from our previous lessons that every point on the unit circle has coordinates that are cosine, comma, sine, and then last day I threw in an extra one here and we put tan in there. So the coordinates for some very important angles are, when we're talking about a 30 degree angle, that's pi over three, and that is root three over two, comma, a half, comma, or root three over three. So we've got cosine of 30 degrees, and sine of 30 degrees, and tan of 30 degrees. If we're talking about a 45 degree angle, which is pi over four, our values are root two over two, root two over two, and one. And if we're talking about a 60 degree angle, or pi over three, we're talking about values of a half, root three over two, and root three. So just a reminder that here's our unit circle, and that we've got pi over four right here, we've got pi over six right here, and we've got pi over three somewhere up here. Now, the other things that are really important are this point here, this point here, this point here, and this point here. So what we've seen now is that we've got a value of one comma zero. That's the, that is the coordinate of this point. So it's one comma zero. And if you remember to get a tan value, we said tan was always sine over cos. So in this case, sine is zero and cos is one. So zero divided by one is just zero. And you can always double check that on your calculator if you want. Up here, we have coordinates of zero comma one. And then if we go sine over cos, we've got one divided by zero. And remember that whenever we divide by zero, we call that undefined. Over here, we have negative one comma zero. Again, we take zero divided by negative one, we get a zero. And down here we have zero comma negative one comma undefined. So remember this point here, this point that's labeled B, well that is the same as 90 degrees and that is pi over two. The point over here, 180, we know that as pi. And over here we've got 270 degrees and we know that as three pi over two. And back to the beginning, we have um, zero degrees or 360 degrees. And we know that as zero or two pi. So just some important things you need to know, maybe make a diagram of this for your own self, of this unit circle with all these coordinates on it, because these are, are all values that are gonna come in play when we're talking about solving trig equations. So we're looking now at solving trigonometric equations. So how we actually solve these equations. So you should already have skills that help you solve linear and quadratic equations. And if you've got those, those skills, then solving trig equations isn't really that hard. So for example, solve the following trig equation in the stated domain. So it says that two cos theta plus root three equals zero. And that in the domain is anywhere between negative two pi to two pi. So your angle is between negative two pi and two pi. So we're definitely talking about radians here. Now, all you need to do is consider this cosine like a variable like x and just solve for cosine. So cosine, if we're gonna solve for it, we have two cos theta equals negative root three, and then we divide both sides by two. So we get cos theta equals negative root three divided by two. So really you're looking for an angle or angles, could be plural, that when you plug it into cosine, you get an answer of negative root three over two. And for that, we need our unit circle. So remembering that our unit circle always has the coordinates of cos comma sine comma tan, we're looking for a first coordinate of root three over two. 
and here it is with 30 degrees or pi over 6. Now the next thing is that we need a negative root 3 over 2. And this isn't negative, but if you remember the cast rule, the cast rule tells you where um, certain ratios are positive and negative. So cosine happens to be positive in quadrant 4 and positive in quadrant 1. So we're looking for two angles that appear in quadrant 2 and 3. The other thing you need to remember from the unit circle is that there's symmetry in the unit circle. So this pi over 6 here corresponds with another angle on this side, which is 5 pi over 6. It has the same coordinates, except in this quadrant, cosine is negative. So there's one of our answers, 5 pi over 6. And the next one is going to be in the third quadrant. Well, that happens to be at 7 pi over 6. Same coordinates, but cosine is negative. So this whole restriction part says that our angle is in between negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi, which means we, are, we need to take one full rotation around this unit circle in the positive direction, which we have 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. And we also need to take one full rotation in the negative direction, because we're talking about negative 2 pi as well. So if we go in the negative direction, then we get to this point right here, and that is not 7 pi over 6, because that was from the positive direction. That'll actually be negative 5 pi over 6. And if we continue going, then we get to the next point here, which is negative 7 pi over 6. So there's our answers. Each one of these answers satisfies this equation. So if we found out cosine of 5 pi over 6, we're going to get an answer of negative root 3 over 2. Same thing with 7 pi over 6 negative 5 pi over 6 and negative 7 pi over 6. And when in math, when we have more than one answer for the same variable or for the same missing value, we include that in a set of kind of squiggly brackets. It's called solution set notation and it just means that we have four different answers all for the same variable. So our first trigonometric equation looked an awful lot like a linear equation. So our second example here is going to look like a quadratic equation. So we've got sine squared x minus sine x minus 2 equals 0. And we're trying to find out the values for x that will make this thing true. But x has to be between 0 and 360 degrees. So if the sine squareds kind of freak you out, we'll just make a substitution. We'll say that w equals sine x. So now we've got w squared minus w minus 2 equals 0. And that is something that, that's a quadratic that you can actually solve by factoring. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 2 but add to negative 1. So that is negative 2 and positive 1. So we end up with w equals 2 and w equals negative 1. Well w was just sine x. So we get sine x equaling 2 and sine x equaling negative 1. So again, pulling out that unit circle, we can now just look on this unit circle and find out where sine x is equal to negative 1. Well, we know that it's sine is our second coordinate on all these points. So we're looking for a value of negative 1 on, in the second coordinate. Well, it's not here because that gives you a value of 0. It's not here, this is positive 1, so it will be down here where our second value is negative 1. So this is a value of 270, or an angle of 270 degrees. Now, our restriction said that we're only going to do one rotation around the unit circle, because we're going from 0 to 360 degrees. So we only have one answer, and that is 270 degrees. Now the other thing that I'm hoping that you've realized is that none of these values are greater than 1 for sine or cos. So if we're looking at sine specifically, a half is less than 1, root 2 over 2 is less than 1, root 3 over 2 is less than 1. So we can't actually have an, uh, an answer of sine of x equals 2. So this is actually wrong. We can't. It's a, uh, an answer that doesn't work out in our equation. So we actually only end up with one answer here, and that is 270 degrees.
So what we've been finding so far is something that we call an exact solution versus a general solution. So um, everything we've been finding are called exact solutions because they've had a specific domain. So our answers are very specific. We know that they lie either between like negative two pi and positive two pi or zero and 360 degrees. But sometimes you're not given a restriction on the domain. So your answer will have to be in a general solution. And that is a solution that encompasses all possible answers. And there's just a specific way that you have to write that thing. So let's take a look at this. It says solve sine squared theta equals a half. Well, this equation right now, we can use a square root property and take the square root of both sides. And in doing so, we get sine theta equals plus or minus one over root two. Now, remembering that we can't have roots in the denominator, that's the same thing as saying root two over two. So our unit circle, we're looking for where sine is gonna be root two over two. Well, that appears right here. Uh, we're looking for our second coordinate. So anything that has a multiple of pi over four. So we had three pi over four here. We had five pi over four here. And we had seven pi over four down here. Now notice that it is plus or minus root two over two. So we actually have to include all of these answers. Pi over four. We have to include three pi over four. We have to include five pi over four. And we have to include seven pi over four. Now this question didn't have an actual um, restriction on the domain. So we, that's only going around the unit circle once. We can continue going around the unit circle over and over and over and over again. And we're gonna keep on getting answers. So we wanna be able to find, to write this answer as a general solution. So it includes every answer possible that still follows this pattern. So you need to be able to identify this pattern. And what this pattern is, is it looks like it's all these pi over fours, but it's all the odd values, right? So it's pi over four plus another two pi over four, if that makes sense. So it's pi over four plus another two pi over four gets three pi over four, plus another two pi over four gets five pi over four plus another two pi over four gets seven pi over four. Now, that could be multiplied by n. And what this n is, n can be any integer. And so now I get into some crazy math language. We're talking about where n e i. So n, this just means where n is any integer. So let's just clear this off for a second and I'll rewrite what we've done. We've got pi over four, we said, plus two pi over four. I've thrown in an n here and I'll explain why in a second. And we're n e i. And this just means n is every integer. So if this n happens to be a positive one, then I get pi over four plus two of pi over four, which is three pi over four. If this n happens to be a positive two, then I have a four pi over four here and a pi over four, so I get five pi over four. If n happens to be the next integer, which is three, then I get six pi over four plus pi over four, which is seven pi over four. Now this looks an awful lot like the solutions we just found not too long ago. So this part of the equation just tells us that we're talking about integers, so we're not talking about any halves or, or fractions or decimals, we're talking about integers. So they could be positive or negative. And this just tells me that I'm looking at pi over four to begin with, and then I'm going up by two pi over four each time. So if we want it to be exact, hopefully you can reduce pi over four or two pi over four into pi over two. And this is what we call our general solution. It includes all multiples of pi over four that satisfy this equation. And remember we said that we're looking for an answer of plus or minus root two over two. So that included four answers to begin with, but to write it in a general solution, we can write it like this. 
So in summary, trig equations are solved just like linear and quadratic equations. The coordinates for special angles from the unit circle that we found in previous lessons are useful in helping us solve trig equations. You can state your answer as either an exact solution or a general solution. Exact solutions included solutions only from a specified domain, where general solutions include all possible answers. So there's a spe specific way that we write those. Your assignment is on pages 211 to 214. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class tomorrow.